intro. What's going on YouTube? It's Marv from Marvelous Visuals. I just want to put it out there first and foremost. Apologies if I'm slow today. I'm usually slow anyway, but today is extra slow. This is pretty much the first thing that I'm doing after having surgery. At the moment, I'm at home. I want to be productive. This isn't too strenuous to do, so just please bear with me. If you've clicked on this video, you're more than likely going to be receiving your loop deck soon, or you've bought it and you don't know what to do. So first things first, a great warm welcome. Welcome to the loop deck live family. You're going to love it. And what's even better, go down to the description and you'll see my profiles. Now these profiles took me a while to make, easily more than four hours of time. Of course, you may look at them and think, why did that take you so long? All it is is that you go through the process of, of course, setting them up, maybe using the defaults, changing a few things, and then actually going into the program, using it, and realizing there's a lot that you actually want to change. So you've ultimately got my version, my thought process, what I think would be a more efficient route to take when using your loot deck. Hopefully that now saves you time. The profiles that I'll be discussing today are for Lightroom and Premiere. I have not had the time to use it on Photoshop as I don't use the loop deck and Photoshop combination that often. My only ask is that if you are downloading my profile, please watch my video from start to end. Make sure you hit the like button as I'm sure it will start your process off a lot better than starting with the generic. And please consider subscribing if this is the type of content that you want to continue to see. So if you haven't already, go down to the description, download my profiles. They'll be in a Dropbox link named Loop Deck Creative Profiles. They are LP4 files, really tiny, less than a megabyte, one for Lightroom, one for Premiere. Before this, after this, it doesn't matter. Make sure you go onto Loop Deck's website and you go and get the most up-to-date software. Download the appropriate version. Make sure that you are talking about the Loop Deck Live. I don't want you taking my profiles and then saying that they don't work if you've got a CT or a Plus. Make sure that you've got the right Loop Deck. Once installed, you'll get a screen that looks exactly like this. I would say it's pretty user-friendly. Uh, it still took me a while to sort things out and to map things out. I think that might have been the sheer excitement of having it, however, Let's get to the point. If you go right down to the bottom of the screen, bottom left part of the screen, straight away you will see profile under device settings. All you have to do is after saving my profiles, go to import and find where you've left them, where you've downloaded them to. Import and takes a couple of seconds and you're well on your way. That's it, all done. So it took me a while to figure out what does what, if I'm honest. Uh, to simplify things, the dials are for sliders. The main screen buttons are to change what the dials do, if that makes any sense, what the sliders do. So if you wanted to go from hue saturation to exposure, then you would set something on your main digital uh, touch screen right here. You change something on there to then change your dials. If you then wanted to change the page of what you see on that main screen, then you would use your buttons. That's how I eventually figured out how to set my loop deck up efficiently. So I'll select Lightroom here. You'll see that my setup comes up. And if you've imported mine, then it should come up the same way on your loop deck program. So we'll fire up Lightroom. Off the bat, when you open up the app, it's gonna go to the default settings. So if you've got multiple images in there, you can cycle through using I've set mine up for both sides, depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, it's ambidextrous. These transforms, if I'm honest, I just threw them in there because I, I rarely use them. Or if I do use transform, then I will use it with a mouse. Now, zoom all steps for me is really important. I use that a lot of the time when I'm kind of messing around with a brush or I wanna see things in detail. Um, and then you've got your stars. I won't go into too much detail because this will just turn into a long video that you guys won't want to watch. So my first page is pretty much the whole edit done. Notice as I've gone from the initial page to the first page, the dials still have the same options along the side and that's because we haven't selected anything. So I can go to exposure and then it will change. Now I can go back to selection and I've got all of those first settings that I had on the initial screen. If I go back to exposure and I wish to change them really quickly back to the first screen, then it will take everything. Basically, that's the reset to the first selection stage. However, I generally float around page one and that gets most of my edit done. Tint, clarity, vibrance. I've got my curves and my grain sharpening, haze, split toning, noise reduction, 
um, HSL sliders and then literally on the second page is more so my copy and pasting, my rotating, um, the angles and stuff like that don't really work well with this. For example, if I was to press R on the screen, which would take me to my crop overlay, you'll see that the, the screen goes blank. The loop deck, unless you've got the CT or the plus, I believe, it won't work I, I actually think the CT's got some issues with this, but it won't work within this setting. So that's just something to keep in mind. I press R again to come out and the loop deck turns right back on again. So there's not much that I will use on the second page. Third, I've got export settings, but I mean, by the time I'm at that point, I'm probably using my mouse anyway. Apologies, there is some crap on the end. I didn't actually have a look at this before I made my preset or my profile. I just thought, let me get it out to you. Let me get you in a starting point and position. Feel free to change what you want to. Um, you'll see that on page five, I've got some presets sitting in there and they're in pink. So you can set up your own favorite presets. You can, I don't know if it would have sent that with it. I don't know. You can set it up however you like. This is just that starting step for you. I'll quickly take you guys into Premiere. I really like my Premiere setup. I feel like it's really efficient. I think I've done a, a good job. I give myself a pat on the back in position and everything where I need to, just to make things a lot more efficient. I know where I'm going all the time, so on and so forth. I delete a lot of my footage, so there's literally nothing left on this timeline. However, I still will be able to hopefully help you see what I'm doing here. So just looking at the main screen, generally throughout my cutting process, which is probably the longest part of the process, I will have it only on this page. Now, Premiere likes to crash. Save is right there. I'm naturally always just, even accidentally flicking that save button um, and making sure that I'm up to date. Set frame to size. If you are a street photographer or you want to throw photos in there, photos generally speaking are bigger than 1080 and 4, 4K. So pressing that button will bring it right into the, into the image size or the screen size. And then you can use the uh, X and Y and the scale to put the photos wherever you want to put them nice and easy nice and quickly so i'm resizing my photo in seconds literally zoom is so 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 efficient jog is going to help me move across my timeline so i've got my undo and redo that are just here my ripple delete is important now these these what you can't see i've set my second button here or well, this one is just to to cut whatever um is on the timeline that's just there, the single cut. So let's go back. This one cuts the whole row. Um, and I don't know if you guys know how important that is, but at this current moment in time, I'm not only recording on the camera that you can see me on, I'm recording on my screen so that you guys can see me. I'm recording on my secondary screen so that you guys can see my loop deck. Um, I'm also recording through my phone and onto my external mic where I don't know if it's been hiding or not. It's on Rafiki's nose. But I'm going to have at least four layers of things going on. Audio, I'm going to have three different cameras or, or, or views, I guess. This used to take me hours. Now I just synchronize everything, cut right through um, and then just keep going from there. So I've got select clip at playhead and after cutting those two slices, I can then just ripple delete. So I'm getting my main camera, my sound, my screen, my second cam, all cut at the same place, all um, kind of ripple deleting everything within that same section and getting rid of it. But going into my second pages, I, I don't really go into this page very much. I must say that after my last Loop Deck video where I mentioned I don't use the color grading anymore, Generally, that is now true again because I've found a certain select of LUTs that I now like to use. However, that same video, I ended up color grading with the Loop Deck Live. And I, I tell you, I used to run from color grading on that and it was such a walk in the park. I would definitely recommend doing so. So I, I've got all of my settings on number two and you've got all of your creative create your corrections um, your tint, your vignette, and even moving where you would think a mouse would be more dominant. And this has sliders for X and Y. Let me try and find it. I think it's the tones. Right, so you've got your mid-tone X, Y, and Z. I mean, I thought that was going to be difficult because you didn't have a mouse, but yeah. Anyway, this isn't a review. I won't keep babbling. 
try it out for yourself, see what you like, see what you'd want to change. I would be offended. In fact, tell me what you have changed because maybe there's something that I've missed that I would like to add into mine or kind of refigure out and I'll be taking, <laughs> I'll be taking a profile back from you guys. Quickly going back into the app, my camera's about to die. I forgot to show you guys in the last video. If you wanted to create your own um, kind of custom looking layout as well, what you could do is go down to custom, create whatever it is. I'm just going to call it Marv. Um, and you can change your icon as well, like literally change your icon. So I'm just going to pick up, I don't know, a picture that I used in my last upload, save it. And now you've got a little photo of whatever you want to keep on your loop deck. I haven't gone that far, but I thought I'd just throw that out there because I missed it on the last one. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. It helps me grow with this channel. Make sure you do not forget to hit the like button. That also gives me another boost. If you've had any issues with setting this up, make sure you hit me up in the comments. I'm sure that I'll be happy to help. I'm sure that I'll know what's going on anyway, and I'll figure out a fix to help you move forward and progress with loop deck editing. They should sponsor me. I'd like, may maybe, maybe me doing so might lead to one day, who knows. Nevertheless, hit me up, hit the sub button. Hopefully I'll see you again. Take care until the next one. Peace.